So welcome to the Razzle Dazzle webinar, everyone. First and foremost, on behalf of Alchemy Technology Group and our special guest presenters from Citrix iGel Control Up and Umescent, we'd like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us as we uh, present on the latest and greatest features in the rapidly uh, changing world of desktop as a service. Um, because as we all know, especially as IT professionals, the only constant is change. So let's look forward to the horizon and let's stay ahead of the game. Now, my name is Frankie Nordlis. I'm a solutions architect with Alchemy Technology Group, and I'll be your host for today. But before I dive into the agenda, let's first do a little bit of housekeeping. So for your burning questions, you can type them into the chat. Um, we'll definitely get to them later in a, because we're expecting to have about 15 minutes uh, towards the end for Q&A. Um, I don't want you to forget your questions. Feel free to put them in the chat, but we'll be answering them at the end if time permits. Um, so as far as the agenda goes, I'll start with a brief overview of Alchemy, um, followed by Citrix counting down the top 10 DAS features, then iGel with the latest on their OS 12 designed to deliver cloud-powered digital workspaces, um, continuing with ControlUp, uh, who will be demoing their EdgeGX solution. Uh, which is used to benefit the digital employee experience, um, followed by Numescent with an introduction to their shiny new cloud pager platform to accelerate DAS adoption and simplify application provisioning. Then finally, as mentioned before, the Q&A. And if you can't tell, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, now, for the few in attendance that may not be familiar with Alchemy Technology Group, let me briefly discuss who we are and what we do. So we were established in 2016 to disrupt the partner business. In the last five years, we've grown to over 26 states and over 750 customers. Uh, we've also won over 11 Partner of the Year awards from the likes of Citrix, iGel, Okta, Beyondtrust, Ivanti, Ativo. Um, and we have a ton of other strategic partnerships, including Meta, Microsoft, Nutanix, Arctic Wolf, Veronis, and many more. Um, so I think it's fair to say that whatever our founding alchemists put in those original beakers seems to have had a chain reaction. So at Alchemy, we wouldn't be able to serve our clients well if we ended up spreading ourselves too thin by claiming we do everything. So instead, we focus on going deep across a comprehensive suite of solutions and services. Um, and those include identity and access management, cybersecurity, Microsoft, hybrid multi-cloud infrastructure, communication and collaboration, AI and automation, DevOps, and of course, the focus of today's presentation, which is desktop as a service, which is, as it stands, uh, still the ultimate secure workspace. So aside from the obvious BDI, delivering the ultimate secure workspace includes several components. Those are cloud delivery and integration, thin clients, user access and connectivity, application uh, packaging, persona management, and digital employee experience. Um, now, with all of that out of the way, I'd like to turn it over to Blake Chandler from Citrix to kick us off with the top 10 things that you should know about the Citrix DAS offering. So with that said, Blake, the mic is yours. All right, Frankie, I appreciate it. Hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, I got to tell you, man, you threw me off there with that line, alchemist and beakers and chain reaction. It's good stuff. All right, we're looking good. Can you see me? A little mic check. Yep, sound good. Yep. All right. Yep, sorry, yep. I have to unmute myself, but loud and clear, we can see you. You're looking awesome. good. Well, I appreciate Love it. Again, hey, great line, great introduction. Uh, I'm going to do things a little bit different. I'm actually kind of in costume. As I look at the camera, things are in mirror, but the, hopefully you can make out and read. Uh, I'm a huge F1 fan now, primarily because of the uh, Citrix logo, uh, being a part of the sponsorship of the Red Bull Racing, and then obviously the Netflix show, Drive to Survive. So I'm going to take that theme and do a DAS top 10. Folks, I've got 30 slides, uh, and I've got to do it in 10 minutes, but I've got a bet that I can make it happen. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um, so like Frankie alluded to earlier, um, there's been a lot of change. And when I saw the title for this, um, Razzle Dazzle, I thought of Dazzle, which is one of our products years and years ago. You're, if you've been around Citrix, which I know most of you are looking at the registration links earlier, um, there's probably a lot of familiar names on here, but Dazzle was that first introduction to like that iTunes look and feel. It's got an easy call, way ahead of the time. 
Um, so anyhow, I just wanted to throw that out there. The number one response I get when I mention Dazzle is that's still in the registry. So for you Citrites out there, um, I know that you are picking up what I'm laying down. All right, so coming in at P10, the last position to get some points, uh, I'm going to talk about the inflection point that BDI and the complexity or BDI and DAS is in general. Uh, gone are the days of having to administer and manage this huge monolithic environment for BDI. The unfortunate thing is I believe the majority of folks that aren't really familiar with Citrix still put us in this BDI legacy on-prem bucket. The majority of customers are leveraging DAS and all the benefits that come with moving to infrastructure as a service from a DAS platform. So regardless of whether you're doing on-prem, uh, a managed DAS solution, or even further on in my presentation, getting into some of the hyperscalers that are out there. Um, so in addition to the DAS service that's out there, we're building in a lot of services around the security side of the house. So contextual conditional access, device postures, um, the ZTNA conversation, built into that service with our adaptive auth service. And then in addition to that, app protection, so protecting you from key logging and screen captures, um, really preventing or helping the user protect the user from themselves. Again, all built into that modern DAS package, uh, extending on the BDI that you know and love. All right, coming in at P9, I've got key enhancements for LTSRs. Um, so not necessarily part of our cloud service, but what I want to highlight here is that one 1912 end of life, but going to 2203, lots of innovation. If you're in the cloud, this innovation comes in weekly to bi-weekly cycles. On-prem, it takes a little bit longer. You're looking at about a, I don't know, two-year, have one and a half to two-year uh, cycle here. But a lot of enhancements here. I'll touch more on those in just a moment. All right, coming in at P8, I've got cloud provisioning with hybrid rights. Um, there is a huge asterisk on here that's not there. I'll get to that in just one moment. But 2020 to the latest release, the ability to leverage cloud computer, cloud resources was no longer available. That's been reintroduced with new hybrid rights so you can leverage an on-prem environment and utilize whatever hyperscaler of choice to run the compute. The big change here that's not on this slide that should be in the past, hybrid rights match what was on-prem. Now hybrid rights will give you whatever premium service you're in. So if you're moving from a standard or advanced edition to one of our premium, premium plus, you will now grandfather or inherit the premium features and not be uh, held to what was on-prem. Big change there. All right, coming in at P7, VDA upgrade service. We can now simplify and automate that VDA update. That's gonna remove the complexity for you so you can quickly update your VDAs. The important thing to note here is this is for persistent MCS with dedicated disk and remote access PCs that are out there that are leveraging the VDA. So an easier way to do that VDA management. I will give everybody another little sneak peek for the tech preview. We have the ability now in our workspace app to manage separate clients, including Zoom agents and endpoint analysis agents that need to be rolled into that workspace access. Coming in at P6, service continuity. Five years ago, the beginning of our Citrix cloud or Citrix as a service conversation, what do I do if the internet's down? What do I do if I don't have any network connectivity? Well, the answer is service continuity. Now you have the ability, regardless of whether or not the internet's down, uh, respective services on the back end are failing, gateway services potentially impacted, your users can still work. If you've been around Citrix for a while, very similar to local host cache, but with a lot of uh, intelligence and uh, no need for the users to do anything other than receive that notice and know that they're in good hands. All right, coming in at P5, I've got the automated configuration tool. Actually, a couple of configuration tool sets here. A lot of success when you're looking to migrate your on-prem environment to a cloud environment. How do you take all the policies? How do you take all the machine catalogs? How do you migrate everything? Do it in stages and have backups. That's going to be the automated configuration tool. So you can take the settings that you know and love and convert that into whatever cloud instance you might be provisioning to. Also, we've rolled out PBS, PBS creation for those, for those image, uh, to be able to rapidly roll out your images, the machine boots, PBS provisioning services is a technology that's known and loved, and it is now part of Azure and tech preview for Google Cloud. And the technology will allow for you to save some storage footprint just based on the way it's inherently designed. 
In addition to that, we also now have the image portability service. This will allow you to have a single Windows image and manage it across all your respective clouds, including on-prem uh, hosts that might be out there, Nutanix, vSphere, so on and so forth. Um, this is a huge advantage. I was trying to remember what I use. I've been in IT since 1999. Couldn't remember, I think it was all terrorists. But anyhow, this would have been a game changer a couple of years ago for me. All right, coming in at P4 in the final stretch here, the big points, the Citrix Analytics Service. Service that complements DAS. It's a turnkey solution. It's completely agentless. And it's gonna give you the ability to analyze and proactively respond to your Citrix environment giving you security risk scores and performance risk scores built into the console. Great tool to complement your hybrid workforce with analytics. P3, the big points time. All right, so I alluded to the innovation earlier with LTSRs. We are continuously enhancing the user experience with our HDX, actually used to be called HDX user experience, HDUX, doesn't roll off the tongue very well, but there's been a lot of speed and innovation looking at things like adaptive auth, UDP support for adaptive audio, the frames per second on our HDX 3D Pro all the way up to 120 frames per second. As a matter of fact, we just signed a huge deal with the software company so you can run video games inside of a Citrix DAS environment. A lot of innovation. And in particular with the explosion, I know we're on Zoom right now, but the explosion of Teams uh, the ability to keep up to speed with all of the updates. Uh, we are continuously rolling out features, things like app sharing, multi-windows, the ability to blur out the screen, keeping the pace with what Microsoft is doing. All right, the final two poll positions, P2, Max Verstappen right there. Probably could make an argument for this to be P1, Citrix and Microsoft relationship. A lot of collateral out there on Citrix on Azure. And most recently, that Cloud PC or Microsoft 365, we work better together. The Cloud PC stuff, if you're looking for a single image, great all day, but how do you do that in scale? Citrix is the only way to make that happen. Same thing with Azure. So combining the two forces, it's gonna make for an even better solution. All right, P1, last but not least, coming in with our hyperscaler Citrix packages, for the first time ever, we are rolling out something besides Azure for your backend infrastructure. So you can utilize either Azure or Google. It's bundled as a product, can be purchased from the respective marketplace, can be purchased per user per month. It provides the highest performing DAS solution and DAS package bundled together. So again, Google Cloud as a platform or Azure as a pla uh, platform, completely up to you. So that concludes the top 10, but I'd be remiss not to do a fastest lap. Fastest lap to get into the poll positions. And that is gonna be for all the updates, everything that I just talked about and more. I probably missed a couple that are in your top 10. I would love to get some feedback on that, but updates.cloud.com will give you all the information that you need up to date so you can stay up to speed with uh, what we've got going on, the speed reference very relevant based off of the Red Bull racing. But anyhow, that concludes my section today. The fastest 30 slide, 10 minute presentation I've ever done in my entire life. And with that, Ron, I'm gonna kick it over to you and IGEL to talk about the exciting stuff you got going on. All right, thanks. Uh, this is Ron Nair with IGEL. Let me get my sharing going here. All right, let me know if you can see my screen. Yep, Looks great. great. Excellent, excellent. Again, this is Ron Nair with uh, iGel, and what we'll be going over today is um, iGel 12 features that'll be coming out um, this winter. So what is iGel? So basically, as, as you're moving Windows from the data center of the cloud, from moving Windows to the data center of the cloud, uh, it may not make sense to continue running Windows on the endpoint. So we, you know, companies and governments around the world are using iGel to convert their existing devices and new devices to to run iGel, which is iGel is is um, iGel and the operating system is is Linux based and it's iGel's version of Linux um, for that. But 
what's really key about iGel and, and differentiates us from, from others in the market is just our strong partner ecosystem that we have. So basically um, from hardware devices, so HP tests and, and can ship product with iGel on it, Lenovo, LG, Dynabook, et cetera, uh, can do that. So we have those. We have the analytics that you need. Um, James Jordan will be talking a little bit later um, on control up and, and those features there, but um, Improvata, Tap and Go, uh, all of the, you know, your headsets, all the different things that you need is, is already baked in, 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 in the product. So what I'd like to do now is just kind of go through what, what's coming with iGel 12. So on the onboarding experience, so if, if you, for example, bought new systems from HP, they would pre-ship with iGel, the user experience with 12 is gonna be different. Basically, you just put in your username, your email um, address, and that would go and make the connection and figure everything out. So a very easy onboarding experience there. What we'll be doing also is if any of you have, have run iGel in the past, you, you know that we have this firmware, we, we release and we have these cycles every four weeks, six weeks, and have a new version of the iGel firmware. So constantly updating there. But for example, you might be set on a certain version of Citrix, but you need the latest version of WebEx or Zoom. Um, what the app portal allow you to do is pick and choose the applications that you want to deploy and, and have that as part of the image. So you don't have to say, I got to go to this new version of the firmware. I got to retest some of these other, other features just to get this one new feature that I want. You know, so the app portal gives you that. Um, and the UMS, um, everything's going to be labeled 12. So UMS 12 is going to be more of a, a web-centric kind of modern user interface kind of view uh, around the product and the modern management uh, for that. Um, we're going to provide some insight services, some basic stuff. So it's not something you, you would replace a full analytics like control app that does the full end-to-end -end user experience um, monitoring. What this insight service is going to do is just give you some more insight into what's going on just around your ideal devices and stuff. And then from our service hub, as, as you know, we have with iGel, you know, several different sites for our license portal, other things. There's a service hub is going to provide a single pane of glass that kind of integrate all of this together and, and have that um, view into everything. In our service hub, then we'll have identity, you know, single sign on stuff with Okta, other things like that, and pull this all, all together. So basically coming, coming in now, you'll have um, this new iGel 12. You'll have this kind of single sign-on, good user experience on the onboarding, and then have all of the integrations and stuff there. So that's kind of the, the big gist and what's going on with, with iGel 12 coming. So what I'd like to do now is stop my share. I'm going to turn it over to James Jordan uh, with Control App. James, over to you. Thank you for that. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick overview of Edge DX. Well, I, I control it. It's, it's basically built around the ability to monitor um, end to end, whether it's VDI or down to the physical desktop. And what today I'm going to talk about is physical desktop uh, piece uh, with Edge DX. So what you're seeing here is uh, one of the major, major changes that we've added actually Mac and Linux, which includes IGEL and other thin clients. Uh, so we're able to get down to the end user regardless of where they're at. Um, you know, it's the work from anywhere mentality that we have today. So you're seeing the map. We're looking at seeing where they're at across the country. But then what we do is we go into the devices themselves and you're able to see specifically all of the metrics from the device regardless of where they're at. So this agent is basically it's, it's phoning home. instead. So it's outbound 443 from the agent. And what you're going to notice, you're going to notice that we have some, some thin clients out here. We've got some IGEL devices. Um, we've got some Windows devices. So I'm going to click on an IGEL device just to kind of show you that we've got, um, here's where it's at. We've got uptime, who's logged in, um, the ISP that they're at, their OS, their hardware, which is helpful, especially with IGEL being put on anything. Um, you see the network. You're also going to be able to see CPU, memory, um, the network usage even some latency from that endpoint directly back to your, uh, to where you want it to go. And these are all configurable. So you can choose kind of where you want it to see 
even the latency at each individual hop. So the other thing you're going to see here, obviously, Wi-Fi signal, which is important from that work from home. Um, so, so you know, that's the, one of those things that you can kind of get that final mile of connectivity. Um, we also have that in our in our core product, the Remote DX um, piece, that we're able to get that. Um, along with uh, you know basic performance, we're actually able to see all the processes. Okay, so you're seeing CPU, you're seeing memory, um, and then even have the ability to kill those processes directly from this console. Um, we can look at what's installed. And then we also have the ability to actually run actions directly on that machine from the console. Again, this is outbound uh, from the agent. So when it checks in, it takes those commands and actually go and make some changes. And then we also have that ability to do remote control and remote shadow. Um, so we can remote shell, you know, run a script directly, run a command directly on the machine. We can remote control so we can manage their keyboard and mouse. Um, and then also we can shadow. Uh, now, now I'm going to go kind of back just a little bit to and pick a Windows machine, kind of show you a little bit of the differences that you're going to see. One, you're going to see, you know, that active processes installed applications, but, you know, also we're going to be able to see missing patches if you're running Windows, whatever services are, are running. And then again, that same ability to run scripts as well as run the system. So the other thing that's coming down the road, right, this is one of the newer pieces newer features that we're adding in a version uh, coming hopefully in the next few weeks is the ability to troubleshoot UC tools. For example, Teams and, um, and Zoom uh, is, our first, is our first swing. So we're gonna be able to literally show you how it's connected, if there's some latency, where it's at, what the latency is, how many hops we're taking. We're actually getting you to the ability to really dig into that UC tools, which has kind of been a, a black hole for a long time. So that's coming in the, in the uh, upcoming release of Edge DX. So I just wanted to kind of point that out there just to so. Um, and the other thing is everything, you know, all what I've shown you today, you can, you can demo in your environment as well, and uh, as, as well as the rest of the core products. And with that, I know that you're going to have questions. Again, put them in the chat so we can answer them at the end. But I'm going to hand it over to Duncan um, with New Messet, and uh, he can uh, take, it, take it from here. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Duncan Byerjan. I'm the director uh, of marketing at Numesa, and I'm joined by my colleague Roy Monahan. And so, with the proliferation of remote and hybrid work, as well as the incredible offerings demonstrated today by Citrix iGel and Control Up, it's clear what the value of DAS is and why we're all headed there. So, we're going to talk about how we get you there faster while reducing costs and ultimately simplifying application provisioning across your enterprise. So. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Numesset was founded in 2012 with the mission of simplifying the mobilization and management of Windows apps. So we have a tech portfolio built on 58 patents authored by our team of Windows experts and enabling the largest enterprises in the world to seamlessly package and deploy thousands of apps to more than two and a half million users every day. And so building upon that tenure and technology portfolio, we've developed Cloud Pager, and it's the first and only container management platform for Windows desktops. And so what does that mean for the current state of DAS? So we know that it only takes one application to derail your entire journey. And I can't tell you how many times I've been on calls with prospects and they're saying, we've spent the last month trying to get X app to run. Can you help us? It's stopping us from really ultimately standardizing on DAS or the cloud. And the short answer is yes. So with cloud paging, our container technology, you gain the highest rate of compatibility. So even your most complex legacy and custom apps can run on DAS in a friction-free manner. But we know that compatibility isn't the final destination, or excuse me, isn't the... Uh, only obstacle we're facing here. So cost is a huge obstacle for many. And there are two areas where we can help yield massive cost savings, which we're going to dive into in a bit here, which is offloading backend infrastructure by moving to a fully cloud native SaaS platform and ensuring your apps can run in multi-session environments, which is the lowest cost virtual desktop environment. And according to Microsoft, this can cut your run costs more than 6x. So with that, I'm going to hand things off to Rory to introduce Cloud Pager and explain how to reduce DAS adoption friction and costs. Well, thanks so much, Duncan. Um, yeah, I get the fun task of actually showing you guys um, some of the cool uh, features um, and also 
the lovely looking cloud pager user interface. But before I do that, let me touch on what Duncan had just mentioned in terms of offloading the backend infrastructure. You see, cloud pager is a truly native SaaS platform for container management. Our cloud infrastructure has been supporting our customers uh, for over a decade, so it is tried and true. Our platform runs across multiple zones in each region and features elastic scaling and fault tolerance by design. We set high standards for ourselves in terms of performance and uptime SLA and meet those standards. And to help us meet the standards, we use 24 seven real-time monitoring to ensure performance and SLA expectations are met. The platform is secure, reliable, and trusted. And of course, the benefit of the cloud is that you benefit from our continuous deployments and patching. With Cloud Pager, we do the heavy lifting for you. Um, but you might be asking, well, why care about Cloud Pager? Sure, it's SaaS and that has its benefits, but you know, what are the actual uh, benefits in terms of application delivery? And you know, the topic today is what's new in DAS? Well, there's a new exciting way for deploying and managing your applications in DAS and Cloud Pager is the way. Um, so an example of some of the benefits of using Cloud Pager for managing those applications and containers. Uh, when you centralize the management of your applications with our container management platform, you can remove applications from your images, greatly reducing the overall size of those images. Uh, and not only that, but you know you might have multiple images. Well, you can get down to a single image. Uh, maybe today, you know, we just heard about Citrix PVS in the cloud now, which is awesome. All of us Citrix uh, fans, uh, we love PVS. So say, for example, you're using PVS and maybe you work in a large environment and you've tried in the past to install all your applications into a single VDisk. Well, inevitably, the more applications you install into a single image, the more chance of conflicts. The old way of handling these conflicts when they happen is to simply you know, spin up and create a second VDisk and put one of those conflicting applications on that second VDisk and never should the two meet and that solves the conflict. But then you might have other applications that then cause conflicts and suddenly you might have three, four, five, six, like umpteen different VDisks that you now have to uh, patch and maintain and take care of simply just in order to corral your conflicting applications. Now, of course, when you have multiple VDisks, like I said, you have to maintain multiple VDisks. That takes extra time and effort. Plus, if you install a lot of applications into those VDisks, the size of the disk is quite large. And if you're potentially trying to store those VDisks in the cloud, possibly backing them up into cloud storage, that could become quite expensive. Well, with Cloud Pager, your apps are containerized and centrally managed and delivered to users on events like login, refresh or maybe on a set interval. Um, there's no need to put all those applications into your image. They're div delivered and provisioned dynamically to your users. No need for doing things like a desktop reboot or rolling to a certain snapshot in order to deploy uh, new or updated applications. And the real secret sauce here for how we can achieve this and help you to achieve this is that we help you to successfully package and deploy all of your applications outside of the image. And you might have heard this like claimed before, and maybe you even tried to virtualize your apps in the past with the hope to get to a single gold image and you just weren't able to due to compatibility limitations with the products you used. But I could say with confidence that you will be able to deliver those apps that you couldn't deliver with those other products if you're using cloud paging. You know, things like applications with drivers, complex component services, um, low level system components and tricky licensing shouldn't be a problem with cloud paging. Uh, Duncan also mentioned multi-session, which is now not only for server-based session hosts, but also for desktops in Azure. And by delivering your applications in containers assigned via Azure Active Directory groups, you ensure only the users who you've assigned the applications to can see and use them um, regardless of whether they're on a shared space. Desktops are relatively new to multi-session, so there are still some desktop applications that are not compatible with multi-session, and we can help you to get those applications to work on your multi-session desktops. Plus, we have some great features for setting like licensing restrictions based off of like concurrent usage um, on uh, your desktops as well. 
and I'll come back to that on the next slide. But with Cloud Pager, we also empower you to manage the application lifecycle of your app portfolio through metering and reporting on application activity of those containers. So perhaps today, for an example, you have a lot of apps installed in your images, and maybe you assume like there's old Visual C++ uh, runtime redistributables in there, and you're scared to rip them out despite the fact they're no longer being patched. So it's a security hole, but you just don't want to disrupt things and break applications. So you just leave it in there. Or maybe you have licensed applications that are in the image and exposed to users who shouldn't have them. Um, and maybe you don't even know who is uh, using those applications today. Well, with Cloud Pager, you can view the activity and determine the usage of those apps to decide when you can reduce the number of licenses you own and potentially even retire the apps um, saving you money. And at the core of Cloud Pager is just simplicity. Uh, it's very simple to lift and shift and modernize uh, your application delivery and uh, bring a modern orchestration to your environment and to your desktops. So we didn't have time for doing a demo today, but here's a quick, a quick GIF or GIF, depending on how you prefer. Uh, but you can see here is an example. It's as simple as just dragging and dropping your packages or containers onto the Cloud Pager UI and then assigning those applications to the users or groups who you want to use them. And your eyes don't deceive you either. So you could see there is a Cloud Paging package in there you may not be familiar with, but maybe you're already using AppV and MSIX today. And maybe you're thinking, well, I don't want to like have to convert my applications to Cloud Paging, so I'm not interested. Well, you don't have to, you can leverage all that time and investment that you put into AppV if you have like 100 AppV packages and just simply bring them forward, drag and drop them and assign them by Cloud Pager and get some of the benefits of orchestrating your AppV applications uh, from a SaaS container management platform. And there are several benefits to orchestrating and modernizing the way you deliver your applications. Uh, for example, uh, using and leveraging modern technology like Azure Active Directory. So, you know, sync your on-premises Active Directory groups and users to Azure AD, and then quickly and simply dynamically provision applications and updates directly to your Azure AD groups. And this is dynamic. Um, the application shortcuts could just like appear in the start menu or on the desktop themselves. To users, it looks like, you know, the application is just locally installed but it's been dynamically delivered and it just works great. Uh, also really great advanced features around license policy enforcement that I alluded to on the last slide. But for example, like if you have a license agreement with the vendor and you're only allowed to use maybe five concurrent licenses, like in the past you might've been like, oh, well, I know 10 people need this app. It's only really used at the end of the quarter for finance. I'm just gonna wing it and say only five people need this concurrently. And then audit time comes and you get dinged because it turned out more people needed it. Well, with our license enforcement, you could set it to like a maximum of five. If a six person tries to use it, they get a message and say, sorry, it has exceeded its maximum. You have to wait until someone closes the application. Also, you could do other cool things like if you're deploying an application container, you can set an expiration date. And when it expires, the access is removed. Um, I mentioned dynamically delivering those applications down to your desktop's start menu or um, into the uh, onto the desktop itself. But you also have the option to deliver it via Cloud Pager storefront for self-service. Now, if you're already happy in using your uh, Citrix storefront or your Citrix workspaces, by all means, keep using that. We are a Citrix partner. We love Citrix. Um, you can still get the benefits of Cloud Pager in terms of orchestrating the applications in your environment, uh, being able to take applications out of the image and get the savings and the benefits that way. And kind of at the core, uh, we are an orchestration and container management platform and containers and containerizing applications for the desktop have several benefits, including the ability to deploy applications in seconds seamlessly to end users on their desktops or via that uh, storefront. Um, you can also update applications in real time, including when users have active user sessions. So this is something that a lot of vendors have tried to crack is that auto update like capabilities for packages and we have cracked that. 
You can also instantly remove applications from end user desktops and it does it cleanly because it's a container. It's not gonna break other applications by taking a shared component away. It's not gonna be disruptive. And one of the really cool things is you can instantly roll back changes. So say you deploy an update and maybe it's you know changing the database connection string because the DBA team are updating the database and moving it. Well, if the DBAs roll back and all of a sudden the client stops working and there's an error, you could quickly roll back the client to a known good state uh, instantly, get them back working. And also you can remove applications from end users with the push of a button. So you can, for remote support purposes, terminate a container session or just even remove it from a user with the click of a button. And I'll throw it back to uh, Duncan. Awesome, thanks Rory. And so before we close, I just kind of wanted to summarize the scale and time savings that we're talking about as well as the cost savings. So um, all of this to say by taking our container technology and leveraging Cloud Pager, we can take really your DAS adoption timeline for a matter of months down to really less than a month. And so kind of looking at the scale here, we kind of scripted this out for how long it takes the average customer or prospect to take a traditional approach to manual install. And then next, if we summarize it down here, um, we'll take it from essentially, uh, yeah, a matter of months down to here. And so, um, Really, this is a, this is what Rory was talking about, which is being able to abstract those applications um, from those base images and strictly just drag and drop them to the cloud, and you're there essentially. And, and so, the next part that I want to go through is really what this does from a cost savings perspective. So, while you're accelerating your adoption by eight x, um, you're also getting a great deal of cost savings there. But then once you're on the cloud, by mitigating those application compatibility issues and getting to a single base image, you're going to be able to cut packaging and maintenance efforts up to 93%, have your cloud storage consumption, uh, which in many ways will help pay for Cloud Pager itself. Um, and the key here being, uh, again, we're really going to help you get 8x faster DAS adoption, 6x reduction in virtual desktop run costs predominantly by getting those applications into multi-session, um, eliminating that monthly packaging and maintenance overhead, and then um, really helping you get down to that single base image and, and reduce the amount of uh, cloud storage consumption. So uh, thank you so much for, for your time today. We're really grateful to uh, everyone here for having us. We look forward to alleviating your DAS adoption hurdle soon. And with that, I will turn things back over to Frankie uh, from Alchemy for Q&A. Absolutely. Thank you, Duncan. And uh, obviously, there was a lot to cover here. And I think all of our special guests uh, did a, a good job with this sort of TikTok-like short form Matt presentation, which is good for the millennials and the Gen Zs out there. Um, so <laughs> thank you, Blake, for uh, counting down the top 10 uh, DAS features in Citrix. Uh, Ron, uh, for presenting on iGel with the latest and greatest of OS 12 designed to deliver the cloud power digital workspace. Uh, James from Control Up for demoing the Edge DX solution and how it's used to benefit the digital employee experience. And uh, Duncan and Rory from Numescent with uh, an introduction to the shiny new Cloud Pager platform to accelerate DAS adoption and simplify application provisioning. Um, so with that said, we'll we'll just open it up for Q&A. So these uh, questions are actually going to come from the chat. And I was I did jot them down here. So. We'll start with uh, one of the questions. Um, I, I won't say who asked the questions, just you know, for anonymity. Um, but we had one question that said, uh, "We can't get Microsoft Teams to fully, um, fully working on Citrix desk, uh, Zen Desktop, uh, nineteen twelve CU four environment um, to share multiple monitors. It doesn't work um, with certain apps and uh, to give controls to." Um, that was actually answered, you know, they, we have a support matrix, um, you know, having been at Citrix for like about a decade and uh, spending some of that time, a considerable amount of time in support, I would probably say, you know, just try probably 2203 um, in your uh, in your environment, maybe in a in sort of a sandbox environment uh, to see what you get there, because I know there were a lot of enhancements there. Otherwise, you know, I think Blake had a very good recommendation with the matrix um, to make sure that you're using all the things are compatible, your version of Citrix, the, uh, the patching, um, the operating system, the version of Teams, et cetera. So as long as those things line up, those things should work. But, um, but definitely let us know. Um, we're here for you. Um, Blake, I don't know if you had anything to add to that. 
Hey, I appreciate the call out there. And uh, I will leverage your wisdom and experience. Always latest and greatest. Inside that article, I think it's exposed to everybody. You will see a diagram that has each respective team's feature and the needed components that are out there. So always the latest and greatest, especially when you're looking at the, the, the new optimizations or innovations that are coming out. Um, we, if you've been using Teams, which is, I, I assume most have, um, you'll know that you know, every couple of weeks there's a new change that's in there and it's, you got to keep those up to date. So uh, latest and greatest in the feature matrix that's out there. It'll clearly outline not only the version that you need on the back end, but also the workspace app on the endpoint itself. Thanks. Thanks, Blake. All right. So this question is going to be for Control Up. Um, does Control Up work with uh, cloud and on-prem environments? So, so yeah, that's a that's a good question. So basically, we don't care where your infrastructure, where your um, endpoints reside, whether it's BDI, whether it's physical. We can support both on-prem environments as well as cloud because you have the connectivity to that. Um, we have uh, some APIs directly into Azure and AWS as well. So we can absolutely uh, support both cloud and on-prem. Awesome, awesome. All right, the next question is gonna be for Numescent. What do I need to do in order to get Cloud Pager working on my Citrix DAS desktops? Uh, yeah, I could take that one. Uh, so it's, it's pretty simple. Um, you can uh, integrate with Azure Active Directory, like I said, during uh, my session there. Um, pretty quick and easy to get uh, that integration set up within your Azure tenant. Um, and really, it's just a case of if you have existing packages and you want to deploy those, drag and drop them like I showed onto Cloud Pager and assign them to the groups. And then if you're using PVS or MCS, you could put our agent called the Cloud Paging Player um, installed into the image or um, you could also just have it as part of an automated build if you're doing automated builds of um, your your desktops as well. Um, and then it's it's very simple. I mean, once the uh, users log in for the first time, they'll get their application shortcuts if you've assigned them that way. And um, after that, seamless updates and all the orchestration and uh, ex uh, user experience benefits. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. The next one is for Citrix. So. Um, the question goes for the adaptive authentication. Um, well, for the adaptive auth, is an on-prem ADC needed? So do we need a Netscaler slash ADC for adaptive authentication, Blake? And I love the question. Um, the answer is no. So some of the components that are uh, on the ADC side are being service-ified. I just made up that word, but as a service. So adaptive auth in some of the packages, I didn't get into the packages that are out there, but adaptive auth, uh, for that conditional and contextual access will be now included as a service as far as that DAS offering. So what does that mean? Um, that means you can do endpoint analysis checks. You can check to see if a search there. Uh, it's really beneficial for hybrid workforces. Um, it, let's say, for example, you have a BYO policy and you want to enforce multi-factor authentication on those devices, but not internally. Some of the terminology we've been talking and discussion points we've had for a while, it's now included in the DAS package as a service. So still a lot of advantages to the ADCs, um, but when looking at that adaptive all service, it's now included in DAS Premium and DAS Premium Plus. Okay, all right. No, that's that's definitely good to know. And I, I had a question for the iGel team. I, I know um, obviously with iGel, you're more of a software company now. And and um, I, for, I, I remember one time the USB keys that I could boot up my laptop to save my butt when my laptop broke one time and I really need to uh, finish a project. Um, are, you guys, uh, are you guys developing those in USB-C format or is it still traditional USB-A? Um, we have with the UD Pocket 2, we have a device if I had it, that's um, on one side has a regular USB and on, on the other side is a USB-C. So you just a UD Pocket 2. So yeah, oh, we have that. Yep. Uh -huh. that's, that's the both worlds. So I only need one device and it doesn't matter if it's USB-C or USB-A. Um, I'm good to go. Hey, Frank, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. to tell you, iGel, I always like when you ask iGel question, they're like, I've got a device. And they look around because chances are it's sitting right there. <laughs> No, indeed. Um, all right, so next question is gonna be for Control Up. How is the agent deployed and updated? So there's a couple of ways you can do directly from the console or you can actually go and, um, and actually 
put it in, you know, you can use SCCM if you're using that, if you're using any kind of deployment tool, because we do have an MSI. And then for, for especially the edge, it's basically uh, you put it out there one time and we can update it from the console. Next time that machine checks in, it's automatically going to be updated to the new version. So yeah, so it's it's very simple, simple, simple. Uh, once it's out there, very easy to update. So quick and easy. I, I don't think you're going to get any complaints about that. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> all right. Next one is for New Messin. Uh, if I uh, if I can just keep using my App V application with Cloud Pager, why would I want to deploy apps in Cloud Paging format? Yeah, I could take that one too. Um, yeah. So I. I love AbV and I've got a lot of experience using AbV, um, but there's some compatibility limitations to AbV. I think I already kind of alluded to things like, you know, applications with drivers, for example. You can kind of deploy applications with drivers with AbV, but it's not really pretty. It's quite complex, and most people just don't bother to deploy those apps with AbV. They might put those in the image. Well, um, with Cloud Pager we could just handle drivers and it's not complicated either. It's not like you can handle drivers, but you have to do it this certain way. Um, we detect the drivers and uh, typically handle those within Cloud Pager. It's as simple as just your, your usual install capture, next, 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 and you're done for the majority of your application. So uh, simplicity and the fact that a lot of those applications that may not have worked with AbB or MSI X for you will work with Cloud Paging. I oh, appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I, I think that highlights the difference between, um, say, like with AppV and Microsoft, you know, Microsoft pretty much does everything, uh, right, but they can't really go deep in any specific area. So if you're really getting, if you really want to get serious about a particular solution, you want to go to a vendor that specializes in that thing. And I think that, uh, I think you highlighted that really well. Um, so the next question is going to be for Citrix. So for the Citrix hyperscaler packages, uh, can the customer mix and match Azure and Google? Yeah, so um, from an infrastructure perspective, once a customer um, selects Citrix DAS or the DAS packages, you will have the option to choose uh, Azure or Google for that for the infrastructure components. Um, once that's set, it's set, uh, but that doesn't limit you from having the ability to leverage on-prem resources or mix and match the cloud of choice. Um, obviously, there's going to be some considerations when working through the different marketplaces. Um, Microsoft is really good at uh, providing limitations around, you know, software, and ELA agreements, and what you can do there. So what I would say on that front is, yes, you can match, uh, but make sure you reach out to your local team to, to really make sure you're architecting the solution correctly um, to have some of those, those uh, landmines that might be out there that you're not aware of. Appreciate it, Blake. And uh, another one for you, Blake, actually, this came in the chat. Uh, did you create those paintings? I, I did. And one of the things I notice every time I present is that I need a level um, because they're not very level. But uh, yeah, the pandemic opened up a world of possibilities. One other thing that's not on the screen right now is I bought a keyboard purely for the, uh, the, the goal of learning how to play Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, that's my bar trick, Wu-Tang Clan on the keyboard, anyhow. And y'all should see Blake's shoe collection. It's, uh, it's insane. Um, all right, so the next one is gonna be for control up. Um, is there historical reporting and how far back does it go? Yes, we do have uh, full historical reporting um, in the real-time console, we get a, up to a year. Same thing with, with Edge. Um, and with Edge, we can actually even get very specific. If you had your own metrics that you wanted to report on, we can build out, uh, build out those reports as well. Even though they might not be in the product, we can build them out um, for whatever you need. So again, up to a year, and that includes uh, Scout Bees as well. Oh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I think if you need anything longer than a year, I, I think it's... Uh... I think that's a niche use case. Um, and then let me let me let me add something else to that. So course. all that historical doesn't doesn't isn't stored on your uh, in your environment. We store it for you, so you don't have to manage the databases or or any of that. We do all of that for you. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. Um, let's see here. All right, um, this next one is going to be for Numescent. So uh, does Cloud Pager work with profile management products like Citrix Profile Management and FS Logics? Uh, the answer is yes. Yeah, it can work with um, whatever profile management solution uh, 
you happen to use. <laughs> if you happen to use uh, roaming profiles, we can also work with roaming profiles. But if you're a Citrix customer, you're probably not still relying on uh, roaming profiles. And also, yeah, for FSLogic, certainly. And um, yeah, uh, we definitely do. We support all of those. Yeah, that's uh, that's super convenient. I know I've had that question come up quite a bit, actually. Um, third one, it's going to be back to you, Blake. So how does analytics compare to Citrix Director? Because I know in the past, like people are like, do I really need analytics? You know, I have director over here. It's the same information. And I, I'm like, no, you just got to see it to know the difference. But how, how would you how would you frame that up, Blake? I, I like the last part there. You got to see it. Uh, you know, it's a tale of two data sources. That's for sure. Uh, not all data was created equal. Um, when you look at director, I think directors are great help desk tool, uh, you know, in addition to some of the uh, features and functionalities that control up can provide. Um, analytics a little bit different in that we're taking user scores, we're building a little bit of AI machine learning, which I know in any tech presentation are like the, the key buzzwords. You can turn it into a drinking game. But that being said, all the innovation is, is definitely being pumped into our analytics service. Uh, again, machine learning, uh, the ability to take reactive steps based off of alerting specific to the Citrix environment are going to be completely unique to the legacy director console. Um, that's that's how I see it. But uh, to your point, got to see it to believe it. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things, man. It's like uh, going from maybe BlackBerry to uh, to an iPhone. It's yeah, like, yeah, can BlackBerry do all the same things? Kind of. Uh, but once you start using a modern smartphone, there, there's a huge difference. Um, yeah, so, all right. So we'll just do one more round of questions before we kind of wrap things up since we're coming up on time. But for Control Up, is there security around who can use the console and what they can do? Yeah, so we have full, full RBAC. So basically you can build out roles for both the real time and edge. You can build out roles to say, okay, this, this set of users can do this, this, and this, but not this and this. Um, and then you can do very granular, uh, very granularity security policies for both. So yeah, so we can, you can definitely say, I want my level one guys to only do this, but I want my level, you know, my, my engineers to be able to do a lot more. And absolutely. Uh, obviously super important con considering that, you know, the, the premise of it is, is data collection, right? So right. yeah. Um, all right. Next one is going to be for Numescent. Um, if I manage my user start menu with Citrix WIM, can I still deploy cloud paging apps and have WIM publish those application shortcuts? It's actually a good question. I'm wondering that myself. Yeah, yeah. That's that's actually something that I did in a, a previous environment too, uh, within a hospital environment for some virtual desktops, just kind of keeping a, a sanity check on the start menu and keeping it in order, um, particularly on published desktops. Uh, and yeah, the, the answer is yes. You know, if you want to add your applications via Citrix WEM, uh, we can enable you to do that. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, commands that you could set as the target and the arguments for doing a, an app launcher to launch those uh, cloud paging apps. Uh, obviously, if they're AppV or MSIX applications, then it's just like publishing any of those applications in your environment. Appreciate it. And I, I think I know the answer to this one. It's going to be for iGel, though. Um, and you may, you may have answered, you may have alluded to this. It can... Uh, can physical machines be converted to IGEL operating systems? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the big thing is as you move your, your Windows workloads into the data center of the cloud, those endpoints convert them to IGEL. So, yeah, so you would convert those existing devices um, and continue to use it. We had other use cases where um, there was hardware from another thin client manufacturer, and they're like, hey, the next version of our OS won't support this hardware. And they're like, hey, they integrated it in all their shipping and receiving sites and touchscreen displays. They're like, we don't want to rip all this out. So they came to us and we put iGel on them and they continue to work and they work great. You know, that vendor makes great hardware. We make great software. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I, know, I know how uncommon that is. Uh, uh, those vendors, those huge vendors uh, abandoning their thin client operating systems <laughs> and not updating it with the latest and greatest to get all the uses out of Citrix and all of the other technologies. Right, um, right. <laughs> and finally, the last question is uh, going to go back to Citrix. So how much does Zoom help your appearance is the question. 
A uh, great question. Uh, I'm going to argue that uh, philosophically it helps a whole lot. Um, yeah, n no doubt about it. Uh, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that call out. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, <laughs> it probably can't do much for me. So um, <laughs> with, with that said, so that kind of wraps up the Q&A. So once again, I want to thank all of our special guests, Citrix, IJO, Control Up, and Numescent. Y'all did a phenomenal job. Um, thank you uh, for your presentations on the latest and greatest in desktop as a service. And uh, a special thank you to, to uh, JJ and Caroline from our marketing team for getting this all together. They did a lot of work in the background to kind of make sure that that this happened um, as, as smoothly as possible. And also a special thank you to our, for, uh, our founding alchemist, uh, Q West and, and Trav, of course. And um, I'll kind of wrap up with a quote from Alan Lakin that says, uh, planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. Um, so if you'd like to plan for your future, or if you have any questions, um, you can reach out to me directly, Frankie at Alchemy Technology Group, or your account rep, or everyone at Alchemy at info at alchemytechnologygroup.com. Uh, thank you all again for taking the time to uh, join us today and very much appreciate it.